it was about two to three months of becoming an active Norse pagan, meaning I was giving up offerings to the gods, forging a connection with Odin, and trying to discover exactly what it means to be a heathen. It was about two to three months before I told anybody. I wasn't really sure what it meant. I wasn't fully understanding where I was by myself, let alone trying to explain it to somebody else. And even my wife, who is my best friend and my closest companion, I hadn't really discussed it with her. I ordered a mule near and began wearing it, and I kind of just treated it as a symbol. And I wasn't really ready to discuss that I believed in the old gods. It took a lot for me to begin to open up the dialogue. And at first I wasn't sure how people would treat me. Uh, my wife it was very understanding and she has been nothing but encouraging. Uh, though she doesn't really identify with the Norse path herself. Uh, and through her support I was able to be more open and answer questions honestly. Coming out of the pagan room closet. Now people in your life will diminish what you believe, right? Because it's such a minority, it's such a small populace that, that truly holds to this faith system. And so whenever you tell somebody that you believe in Thor or Freya or that you're devoted to Loki, they're going to definitely raise some eyebrows, if not openly mock you. And that is the most difficult thing. Another difficult aspect is the fact that they're going to try to sucker you into a debate, right? They're going to pull you in and tell you this and this and the Bible says this and whatnot, and they're going to use their faith system as its base point for the argument. And it kind of stabs itself, right? And you're going to be tempted to go into this argument and to really waste your breath and honestly, it's it's just wasting your breath. Uh, I have noticed with my family that I just simply, I will answer their questions to the best of my abilities, but I'm not going to try to defend my standpoint. It doesn't need defending, right? Uh, the gods are more than capable of taking care of themselves, nor is it my job to convert anybody, right? If somebody has questions, I'll answer them, right? As I encourage you to do so. But I don't have to go door to door and knock on people's uh, doors and speak with them and try to trick them into coming to church with me, right? I don't need to rope people into a false sense of guilt in order them for, to get my attendance numbers up on Sundays. I don't have to do that. Our faith system doesn't need that. We do not convert people, right? Now, what I've noticed is whenever I live an authentic life, right? If I am meditating, if I'm concentrating on my own relationship, people around me have noticed. They see something, they notice something, they ask questions, and then they're, they come to it from a curiosity standpoint. And that curiosity shouldn't exist in the Christian mentality. And that was something that was hard for me as a former Christian. When I was a Christian and I began looking into the old gods and feeling this pull towards speaking with trees, right, and going out into the, the woods to worship, I knew that wasn't coming from the Jehovah God that the Christians dictate exists. And if that curiosity, if that wasn't coming from him, where was it coming from, right? And the more I looked into it, the more that curiosity was satisfied and yet encouraged and I wanted to learn more and more and more as I sure am so many of you are doing the same thing right now you know we are continuously searching and thirsting for this knowledge and for me that was the most mind-opening realization right is that now for the first time I am wanting to be a spiritual person you know as a Christian it was dogmatic and it was very structured and it was very uh, tedious in a task and something I did because I felt I had to do but now with this new spiritual path that I'm on I find that I 
can't get enough. I can't get enough bloat. I'm speaking with fellow heathens and people who are interested in all sorts of heathenry and paganism in general or any kind of spiritual path. It's fascinating. And when you approach it with an open mind and not closed because of certain dogmas say that it has to be closed and that you can't ask questions because your faith system requires faith, not knowledge. It's a problem. And you start arguing with Christians or people of other uh, faiths who want to convert you back to their true faith. And now you're not arguing facts. You're arguing feelings. And you're going to find it very difficult to argue your feelings and to show your feelings, right? Um, so I would say just be very wary of that. Whenever you start coming out of the closet, I would encourage you to let go of these toxic people in your life who are going to try and sway you away from it. As I have had happen with me, uh, my own parents are no longer associating with me right now because I'm an openly practicing pagan. They see my oath ring, my mule near, my heathen tattoos, and they just won't allow it in their house. And it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing for me to not be allowed uh, to be around my siblings uh, because they are a very Christian household and they're worried that I'm going to be a bad influence. And it breaks my heart to not be able to see my siblings, but it also seems to be a slap in the face because most Christians that I know aren't necessarily like that. But you do have a, a certain minority of Christian households that they believe completely in the freedom of religion that we so entertain here in America, as long as it's their religion. Anyways, I know that coming out of the closet, so to speak, is going to be difficult for a lot of you guys. But you have to live an authentic lifestyle. You have to be true to yourself, right? That's what this is about. That's what this journey is. And you're going to be surprised, I promise. You're going to be surprised with, yes, how hard it is, but also whenever you take the mask off and you start living your life as an openly practicing pagan, that you will attract others. That whenever you start wearing your Mjolnir day to day, people are going to notice that. People are going to ask you questions. What is that? Oh, is it from the Marvel movies? Oh, is it from this? And you get to talk now. Now you are opening the dialogue. And yeah, for a couple of people, it's going to be more ridicule. But you'll be surprised at how many genuine questions arise just by you living an authentic and realistic lifestyle, right? We are all born pagan. Yeah, we're all born pagan. I believe that. It is only through years of school and Christian and Sunday school indoctrination that we lose that inert desire to commune with the natural world around us. So when people see somebody doing that, they're going to be stunned. I hope that this video reaches somebody out there who is struggling uh, with that feeling, with that yoke that is on you right now, because it is very hard. We've all been there before. Uh, Leave us a comment and ask other fellow heathens, you know, how we've done it. How many people have just let their parents or their loved one or their brother or their sister or their friends know, hey, I, I am giving up centuries of indoctrination for a true ancestral path. I am happy. And that's the biggest step. Are you happy? I'll see you guys next time.